Hey guys, what's up? Bisected Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next base destruction video. And this is always a fun series to do. Today we're taking a look at yet yeah, another Town Hall 9 base. Uh, pretty solid design. It uh, had a total of two attacks on it. The first was a, uh, a close, but it was a fail. And then the second one cleaned it up. So we'll take a look at both the attacks, see what was done differently and how uh, the base got three starred. But first, as always, taking a look at the base, the strengths, the weaknesses, why it's laid out how it is. This has a dead zone in the middle. I've drawn in the giant bombs and the Teslas, and obviously the dead zone makes it susceptible to a surgical golem attack or something, where you just kind of work your way in a circle around the base. Neither attacker tried that, but it probably could have been an option. Uh, the strength, though, of doing that is it opens up uh, just a ton of possible uh, double giant bomb spots because you can have one in basically each of these four areas around the base uh, in the defender did put the bombs in two of those spots but there's kind of four all believable possible spots this one maybe not quite as much because it's kind of close to the heroes but uh, it still could be an option and the reason for this is the dead zone makes it so there's nothing in the core that's going to negate a giant bomb because it's not like there's going to be a defense right here that'll make that giant bomb spot unrealistic because it'll make it a single trigger or a one at a time. Uh, so by having that dead zone, it really opens up uh, a lot of opportunities for you to put double giant bomb spots to throw off the first attacker because all you have to worry about is making sure there's no defense on this side of it because you know there won't be any defense up here and that goes for all of these uh, three double giant bomb spots. So looking at it from a ground perspective, which is kind of what we're seeing at Town Hall 9, I mean, you see go, uh, go La Loon and stuff every once in a while, but ground is a little bit more common. So from a ground perspective, this base is a little bit tricky on the first hit, especially if you're not doing a golem avalanche or a surgical golem attack, whatever you want to call it. So uh, the first attacker takes advantage of the heroes because they are kind of exposed up here. Uh, goes with the queen walk, so just drops down the queen, lets her start walking, drops a poison for the heroes, and then a rage to keep the queen up because when you're dealing with both heroes, you need both the poison and the rage. Uh, just the rage maybe could have gotten away with it, but the poison was just to be safe because those heroes can do quite a bit of damage. Um, and then wall breakers in right here, uh, lets his queen enter the base and she starts taking out uh, different buildings. The problem is just by luck, she kind of went in at a weird angle and she draws aggro from both these defenses. Uh, because of that, she's taken two point defense and the expo does, you know, increase damage after the update. The expo starts doing quite a bit of damage to her, so she pops the ability before the CC troops are that close. The CC troops, by the way, are a dragon and two balloons. So when the CC troops come out, he has the poison for them, which he drops, but by that time he's already used the ability, and the max level dragon is just a little bit too much, can't handle it, the queen goes down, uh, so that is a bit of an issue that the cleanup attacker deals with. But um, at the bottom here, while that was happening, he starts in with a golem, a few wizards to create the funnel, then comes in, I'll go ahead and use orange for this, with the Valks uh, and the king. Drops down a jump right here, and kind of letting them decide which way they want to go. Uh, even though there is this Tesla up here, there's not a whole lot of space, so the Valks go as you would expect them to left, and start heading this way. Uh, they end up getting all the way over here, so they clear out this part of the base, but and they do get that double giant bomb spot, but the problem is there's still one solid uh, double giant bomb spot left. So when he sends in the hogs over here, the queen didn't take out any of this stuff, so it's all still up. The hogs come in, they trigger that, they all go down, uh, and things just kind of peter out from there. So we'll take a look at the attack, and then we'll see how the next attacker improved this model to get the three star. All right, here we go with JP's attack. Uh, you can see here, has the two heals I didn't really mention, uh, but he uses one for the Valks, one for the Hogs. So anyway, comes in with the Queen, four healers, and uh, you'll see here as he comes, as the Queen approaches uh, the enemy heroes, he's a little bit late. That poison should be down way earlier, because when he waits this long, he has to drop the poison and the rage. That's two items, and that can kind of make it hard, because there's obviously the, de the delay after you drop the rage from when it actually affects the healers. So the queen got pretty low right there, but fortunately got it down just in time. She stays up, doesn't have to pop the ability or anything. Uh, so that works out okay. Uh, she'll start moving in here and you'll see that 
Um, she will take that one archer tower out, but the way she steps up, uh, there's going to be two uh, point defense on her, even after she takes that other archer tower out. But comes in with the golem at the bottom here, wizards, minions, creating that funnel uh, for his kill squad, then coming in with the wall breakers right here. Right there, has to pop the ability on the queen, and uh, the CC troops are still not dealt with. He goes ahead and drops the poison right here, but there's still that threat of the expo. There's a skelly trap, and uh, she'll go down to the CC troops. Here comes the king and the Valks uh, making their way into the base. He drops the jump, and uh, there is that Tesla over there in that compartment to the right of them, but uh, it's kind of far away. I don't think it pops up, so everything continues on to the left even after that archer tower goes down, and uh, he goes ahead and drops a heal on the Valks. They'll actually get the entire left side of the base taken out, but nothing's really over there for the right side, and there's still going to be that threat for the Hogs. He actually goes ahead and drops the Hogs in... Uh, to like back up his Valks and uh, they do pretty well they come in here taking out these defenses everything's distracted on the Valks the one wizard tower does do a little bit of damage to them uh, but still has two left to deploy and uh, the main problem is if you go to spring traps he's only down to a few hogs so even if that uh, double giant bomb set wasn't there he might have been a little bit short on hogs anyway the next two come in on the Tesla but right here they'll go ahead and go up across that double giant bomb set he loses pretty much all his hogs there, last few go down right here, and still has the Valks, the King, the King's ability, but as we fast forward, you'll see here, uh, just not enough time, if anything else, but also the defense is uh, a major problem, obviously. So anyway, uh, good try to JP. Let's go ahead and see how the attack was tweaked, and uh, how Fahim got the three star. All right, we'll take a quick look at Fahim's plan. Uh, he does a very similar thing here, comes in with the queen. His queen is level 30, so uh, she's able to do a little bit more, a little bit quicker. She comes in here, uh, drops the rage and the poison a little bit earlier, uh, so not a huge uh, worry about the queen going down. She stays pretty much full health for the entire beginning. Uh, goes ahead and drops a wizard here to create the funnel a little bit better, uh, pushes the queen on in, and just kind of the way it works out, she actually doesn't take as much damage and her ability is enough to get the CC troops down and keep her up. So she's pretty much free to start taking out all this stuff, and eventually she'll step up, uh, get this Expo, which will negate that double giant bomb set. So that's huge. Uh, just I think the level 30 queen made a difference, plus uh, she stayed out of range of the Expo somehow. So um, not a whole lot of a conscious change there. This kind of got a little bit lucky, I guess, on the queen staying out of range of the Expo, plus the level 30. Uh, makes a difference, but I think the main change here that I thought was important and I think goes for pretty much any attack that you that we're talking about is the value of sending in your kill squad uh, kind of on a runway where they're not going to be split. So when the first attacker sends in the kill squad here, um, they're taking out like this part of the base, but then you have this part up and this part up, and I think especially for hogs, you don't want to have them split like that. You want to have uh, the hogs all be going through one fluid uh, movement along the base, taking out one collective section. So I think once these go down, uh, that kind of creates the runway for his Valks to come in here and kind of make their way along this and then comes in with the hogs to take out this section. So I think the less you have to split stuff up, the better. And especially that's especially valuable because when you come at a base like this, you're taking stuff on kind of one at a time, each section of defenses as you approach it. When you come in like this, immediately there's stuff over here, there's stuff over here, uh, damage coming from both sides. It's just not a good equation for your, uh, for your kill squad. So he goes ahead, comes in with the Valks here, drops down the king, I really like this part, drops the king in here, and his jump spell goes right here. So the king meets up with the Valks, but he also clears out a bunch of that trash because he knows even, uh, well, especially because the jump is going to be extending out. Uh, he doesn't want the Valks to leave the base. He wants them to stay inside the walls and continue to work their way through to that double giant bomb set and then to the expo. So drops in the king, lets him clear out all this trash and meet up with the Valks. Works out very nicely. Everything continues on this direction. And then uh, I think he has to heal for them as well. And then comes in with the hogs here. The double giant bomb set's been negated because that expo went down. So the hogs are just free to storm this part of the base. I'm not exactly sure how he deploys them, but he basically comes in on that side, takes all that out. I think he has a heal for them. Uh, but I think the main difference here was the, the queen walk was improved a little bit. And then the main thing is that the kill squad was changed. Like I said, you want to come at the base from a 
uh, a runway where there's not going to be fl- not going to be flanked. You don't want to come at a base where you're going to be surrounded. You want to come at it from an area that is uh, you can kind of work your way through without stuff shooting in from the sides. And part about part of this is that it's a dead zone base. So if you come in like that, there's nothing in here to shoot the flanks of your kill squad, and uh, it works out well. Gets the three star. Let's go ahead and take a look at the attack. Here we go with Fahim's attack. Uh, comes in here, both people using minions just to clear out some of that trash. Free uh, percentage there and uh, for the funnel. Then comes in with the queen. You'll see he drops the rage and the poison earlier. The poison lasts a long time, so might as well get it down early. Uh, that way he can have his finger on the rage. And he even drops the rage a little before she aggros just because he wants to make sure she's at full health uh, when she has to deal with the heroes and then the Tesla and the wizard tower. Goes ahead and drops one of his own wizards just to make sure. I think that also changed the angle at which she came in this base because on the other attack, the first one, the queen had to go down south a little bit to get that lab, which pulled her towards the expo. So by dropping her farther down, uh, or her, or by having her enter farther up, the expo doesn't aggro onto her. Also the hog to lure out the CC troops. Not a big deal, but that's just going to get them out there a little bit earlier. So she can her ability will deal with because I think he'd been expecting the expo to be on her, so he wants the ability to be at the same time the CC troops come out, so not only does she drop aggro from the defenses, but she also gets the extra damage for the CC troops, because he wants kind of everything to be going on her at once, so the ability gets the most value. The expo actually wasn't on her, but I think had it been on her, it wouldn't have made a difference, because uh, the ability was timed very well with the CC troops coming out, so kind of nice planning there, if that was intentional, I'm not sure. Pops the King's ability to let him take out all that trash, like I said, keeping the Valks inside the base, and the King will join up with them. Uh, so works out great there, everything getting in the heal. The double giant bomb set going off, but that's not going to hurt Valks under heal. They're going to be back to full health, making their way through the base. Comes in with the Hogs here, and uh, yeah, the deployment was from the bottom a little bit. I, I watched the attack, but... They kind of all blend together. Uh, the plummet was from the bottom, and he'll come in with the extra five hogs on the other side. Uh, knows there's no double giant bomb set there. I think that one wall, uh, or never mind, the wall doesn't negate it, but yeah. Knows there's no do- double giant bomb set there, so comes in. The hogs are under heal, so uh, pretty much full health as they deal with these last few defenses. The queen is still up. She took out that expo, like I said, just now has to use the ability. Uh, doesn't even have to use it for the CC troops, so uh, worked out great. Awesome attack to Fahim, getting the three star. I think the high level heroes make the difference, but also how you approach the base. And I think coming in with your kill squad, like I said, at an angle where it's really a nice runway. There's no flank uh, on either side. By flank, you know defenses along the side that will kind of surround the, the kill squad because that can really get them down fast, and they'll tend to split off and weird directions you want them staying together and moving through the base kind of in a one cohesive uh, kill squad so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this base destruction video let me know if you did with a like and a comment telling me what you think and i'll see you guys later bye set to Toronto.